Okay, I'm going to go over the um, tracheal suctioning procedure with you. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure there is an order for suctioning. Review the MD orders. The first thing would be to suction PRN. Um, they'll have an order to suction PRN. I wouldn't just suction, just to suction. So first I need to assess that. Then the f next thing I need to do is I need to come in, you know, make sure I have the correct patient and identify why I was suctioning you know, assess the need for it. I wouldn't just suck, like I said, just any patient. So I come in, I'm getting ready to go take care of my patient, and I look at my patient, and they're breathing really fast. Um, the respiratory rate is elevated. I put a pulse ox on them. The pulse ox is high. I might want to go ahead and take a listen to my patient. I listen to their lungs. I wash my hands, by the way, as soon as I walk in the room. Listen to the lungs. and they have crackles. Um, I try to get them to, to cough. Sir, can you go ahead and take a, try and cough some of those secretions up for me? He's unable to cough up his secretions. Would you like me to go ahead and suction you? He shakes his head, yes. So, sir, I'm, what I'm gonna do is gonna suction you, so I tell him what I'm gonna do. I've reviewed my order, I've assessed the need, and now I'm going to explain the procedure to the patient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little catheter. I'm going to go right down your trachea, and I'm going to help you to cough up some of those secretions. I'm going to pull some of those out. It's not really painful, but it is uncomfortable. Um, it will feel like I'm going to have you, you know, get some oxygen beforehand, but it will feel like I'm taking away some of your breath. Right. It won't be for very long, and it will help you, though. I, it's kind of, like I said, a little uncomfortable when I go down, but it's going to help in the to help you to breathe better because I know you're having a hard time getting those secretions. I know you're having a hard time with breathing right now. So he understands what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the procedure. I have to make sure that I have my equipment. I would want a suction catheter kit, and there's different sizes. I'm gonna use the 12 French. It, the size would be 12 is smaller than a 14. Um, 10 is smaller than a 12. So I look at the suction catheter kit and it says I have one suction catheter, I have one pop-up solution cup, and I have two powder-free, latex-free gloves. This is a sterile kit. I'm also making sure that I have sterile saline. This is a brand new bottle. You can't just use anything just sitting around. You know, it's good for 24 hours once it's open if you can assure the sterility. So I have my brand new kit in here. I also need to have suction set up, and hopefully if you have a person with a trach, you have suction set up, but if not, I bring, make sure to bring that in. I need the canister, and I need the tubing, and so I would make sure to have that. This is brand new, and if it wasn't brand new, I would just put a glove on to test it, so I'm going to go ahead and set this up. I'm going to turn it on, put my finger over here, with or without a glove, depending on if it was brand new or not, so if it wasn't brand new, put a glove on there. Turn it on and dial it, once I have my finger on, my thumb on here, dial it to what I want to set the rate to for suctioning. It's a continuous suctioning. So I'm gonna set it to like 80 to 120 and get this close to me so that I can use it when I need it. Then I have my overhead fit tray. Let's get this at about waist level. Provide the privacy for the patient. Then I'm gonna go ahead and open open my catheter kit. Again, just like you open any kind of sterile procedure, look to where the little, <laughs> the little uh, arrows are and you get ready to open it. So open your kit away from the middle. And just like a pair of sterile gloves, the outside of the container is not sterile, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the outside to, oh, so I'll put that down. And just like I open sterile gloves, anything I open away from me first, then I open towards me. And when I look at this kit, I have the little pop-up container on the outside. So that tells me something. That tells me I probably need to pick that up first. So I'm going to pick that up. Be careful not to touch the inside of the container where it's sterile. I can touch the outside and open that little pop-up bin up. I'm going to take my sterile saline the lid off, put the lid down properly. If this was not brand new, I would lip it first, but since it's brand new, I can just take my and pour it in. So I'm palming it. I don't need to lip it since it's brand new already, but if it wasn't, like I said, I would lip it first. Pour it into my suction container. 
careful how you pick this up. Put the lid back on top. Date, time, initial that. I'm going to put this over here to the side. Now I'm going to open up my sterile gloves and my kit. Remember how you open things up. You take your fingers on the inside and open this all the way. Now the sterile gloves are not placed like ster normal sterile gloves are where they're set, set a different way. They're just kind of laid in here, so you have to determine how you're going to pick them up. But you pick them up the same way. It's just they're not one side is right or left. It's they're ambidextrous gloves. So you pick up and you pinch on the inside. Pick the first one up by pinching. Pick it completely up and look for where your thumb is. Put your thumb in first and your fingers. Okay? Now remember this is sterile, so I go in, pick up my sterile the sterile glove, get all my fingers in, my thumb out. And I come in and I try and find where my thumb is on this glove. And I have my sterile gloves on. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick up my catheter. While I have two sterile hands, I'm going to hold it. I'm going to right hand it, so I'm going to put it in my right hand. And I'm going to remember to keep that all this sterile while I connect. So I'm going to hold it here. I'm going to reach over here and hold this here and connect. Remember that it's, that do not contaminate, do not come too close so that you don't contaminate, but you want to put this on tight enough so it doesn't come undone. Now remember once I touch this over here from this point this way, I'm not, this is not sterile. From here this way, I'm sterile. Make sure this is continued to stay on. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on right now so you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lubricate my catheter and also test the suction. So I put my thumb over this little opening here and test the suction and lubricate my catheter. Now, sir, take a deep breath, take a deep breath. At this point, I could hyperoxygenate my patient, but at this point, I'm just going to have him take a deep breath, take a deep breath to hyperoxygenate him. On a real patient, you could use the Ambu bag to hyperoxygenate. He is sitting at a uh, semi-fowler's position because he's awake and alert. Now, once I've got him hyper-oxygenated, I want to remove the trach collar, just pull it down so that I don't contaminate it on the way in. Now, I'm going to unwrap this and I'm going to make sure to not contaminate on the way in. I do that by, by straightening up my arm a little bit and moving back so it's away from my wrist. Remember when I go in, I also do not want my fingers too close to the trach because if my fingers are sterile, touch the outside of this trach, they're no longer sterile. So I'm going to go in, and again, I can only go for 10 seconds, so I kind of hold my breath on the way in. I hit the carina, so I pull back a little bit before I suction, and then I apply intermittent suction as I twirl on the way out. Now I'm not rushing out, but I'm, I'm going about 10 seconds, so it took me about a second or two to get down, so I'm going another two, three, and I'm being careful when I take it out that I walk my hand down so that it's not flopping out of his chin, his chin on the way out, it's not just flopping anywhere, so I kept that sterile. All right, now remember how far you can go down with this. I'm going to put his trait color back on to give him oxygen and to recover while I come over here and clean my suction catheter out. Notice how, how I'm holding my catheter. It's not flopping all over everywhere. It's sterile. I'm holding it so that it remains sterile. What I do in between suctions, I can go only go up to three times. What I do in between is I need to assess. If he doesn't need to be suctioned again, I'm not going to suction him again. So I need to assess. What's his respiratory rate doing? I have to wait at least a minute, but what's his respiratory rate doing? What's his pulse off? I may be able to hear that he is still going gurgle, gurgle from the outside. If I needed to, I really could put these on with one hand, but I don't really need to, truthfully. I can tell a lot of this stuff just by, you know, without my stethoscope on. Sir, can you take a deep breath and try and cough some of that up? He's trying. He's still not able to, to cough some of that up. So I'm going to suction for the second time. Take a deep breath, sir. Try and, I want him to hyperoxygenate beforehand. So I've already cleaned my suction catheter. I'm going to pull the trach collar away again, keeping myself sterile. I get ready to put my suction catheter in, and I'm going down. 
notice how my hand is? It's not way all back over here. It's so that I do not, so I remain sterile. I get the carina, I pull back a little bit, and intermittent suction while I'm twirling the catheter on the way out, keeping good control of the catheter as I come out. Again, I give his oxygen back, and then I clean the catheter. All the while, I'm assessing him to see how he's doing. I know that's no fun, but it's, it seems to be helping. Take a deep breath. I'm checking his respiratory rate. I'm looking at his pulse ox. I'm seeing if he's able to cough up any secretions. I'm seeing how he's handling it. I'm listening from the outside. Still, I'm still hearing that gurgling. I need to suction again. Take a deep breath for me, sir. So I pull the, after he's done, I take the tray collar away. Of course, I've waited at least a minute in between. Now I'm going to go and suction again. I hit the carina, I come back. And intermittent suction. As I'm keeping good control over this catheter so that it remains sterile. It's not getting my wrist, it's not flopping all over, I'm not taking it out hitting his chin, all that on the way out. Give him back his tray collar, clean the suction catheter. If I needed to, I could suction his nose and then his mouth, you know, cleaning the catheter in between, but I do not need to, so I'm going to go ahead and take the um, suction catheter off. Put that in my glove. Okay, so now what am I going to document? I'm going to document when I first came in, his assessment, what his lungs sounded like, what his uh, pulse ox was, his respiratory rate, that I suctioned using sterile technique, using a 12 French catheter times three, and what I brought up. I brought up a moderate amount of thick green mucus, and then what my assessment was afterwards, that his lungs, uh, after I do an assessment, lungs are clear, his pulse ox is, what is it now, what is his respiratory now? And that's pretty much all I have to do to suction him. Make sure that you put your side rail back up, you leave him in a safe position, all those good things that you were trained to do before. And that's it.